The Transamerica Pyramid Center is one of the most well-known buildings on the West Coast and a landmark for the city of San Francisco. But this unusual icon wasn't always so beloved. This is a biography of California's Great Pyramid, the Transamerica Building. San Francisco has long been a cultural hub with distinctive landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge, Painted Ladies, and the Mission District. But developing in San Francisco is uniquely challenging. The hilly city sits close to both the San Andreas and Hayward fault lines, meaning that earthquakes are a pretty regular occurrence here. So as early as the mid 19th century, developers were thinking about ways to protect their assets and build safer. In 1853, Henry Wager Halleck erected the Montgomery Block, San Fran's first fireproof building, and he built it right at 600 Montgomery Street, the current site of the Transamerica Building. What happened to the Montgomery Block, you might ask? Well, for a solid century, it sat what was then called the Barbary Coast, a red light district and bohemian center for San Francisco. It attracted a pretty different clientele from today's shiny corporate headquarters, including literary icons like Jack London and Mark Twain. In 1906, it survived the devastating San Francisco earthquake and fire, serving its fireproof purpose, but that wasn't enough to save it from being torn down in 1959 to put up a parking lot. After a few undistinguished years under concrete, CEO John R. Bennett, who'd built Transamerica up from a little-known holding company to the owner of the likes of United Artists, Budget Rent-A-Car, and of course, Transamerica Airlines, set his designs on the downtown site for a new corporate HQ. Now, the skyscraper boom that happened during this time was often called a Manhattanization, but Bennett specifically ordered the architect to design something that allowed light to reach the street below, unlike the Manhattan buildings that created deep shadows on its sidewalks. So, architect William Pereira did just that, designing a four-sided pyramid that not only let light onto the sidewalks, but also stayed incredibly stable on San Fran's sometimes shaky ground. Pereira's design is much loved today, but not so at the time. Detractors called it Pereira's prick and critiqued the planned height of 350 meters, which would have made it the second tallest building in the world after the Empire State Building. That plan was scaled back, and today the building clocks in at 260 meters. Construction started on the unique earthquake-proof steel and concrete trust base in 1969 and topped out with the crown jewel at the top in 1972. It then became the tallest building in San Francisco, a title held until the Salesforce Tower surpassed it in 2017. Its wings on either side have both form and function, housing elevators and stairs that make those top floors into accessible spaces. The building became so iconic that it's still part of Transamerica's logo, even though it's no longer their headquarters. In fact, Transamerica was bought by Dutch insurance company Ahon, which kept ownership of the building even though they sold off many of Transamerica America's non-insurance assets, which meant that technically the building had never been sold. That is, until 2020, when broker-turned-developer Michael Schwo and Deutsche Finance purchased it for a whopping $650 million, marking one of the biggest deals and biggest discounts of the pandemic. Today, the Transamerica Pyramid remains an architectural icon and a Class A asset.